Hello everyone, and welcome to Priest Verified. My name is Father Michael Aguino, I'm a Catholic priest, and I'm a teacher at Cristo Rey Tampa in Florida. And today we're going to continue our conversation about faith, the response to God's self-revelation, as covered in the USCCB Bishops Framework for High School Students. This is my first recording, so I ask you to be kind in your comments. And to my students, make sure you take notes. Jesus Christ, the heart of Christian faith and discipleship. For a Christian, believing in God cannot be separated from believing in the one whom he sent, his beloved Son. The risen Jesus is present with us, and he continues to invite us to faith and discipleship. Sometimes when we look at Jesus, it can be challenging. We look at him as just an ornament on a wall, someone that we pray to that's up there somewhere. But Jesus was a real person who walked this earth with us, that cared for us, that loved us, that suffered for us, that died for us, that rose from the dead for us. And he calls us to faith and discipleship, to follow him, and that we can't distinguish this, that we can't just break it apart and say, I'm going to do one part and not the other. We're called to both. So what does disciple mean? Let's look at that. The English word disciple comes from a Greek word meaning an apprentice. Now you may say, apprentice, I feel like I've heard of that. Isn't that the show that Donald Trump did? That's true. But our understanding of apprentice is a bit different. Outside of the modern era, when someone wanted to take on a task and to do something proficiently for the rest of their life, they would become an apprentice and they would have somebody as their master. So for example, Someone who wanted to be a blacksmith, to work with iron, steel, things like that. They would find the best person at their craft. And then what they would do is they would say, can you take me on as your apprentice? And first it would start off by saying, okay, hand me this, hand me that. But then before you know it, the person would say, okay, do this now and do that. And eventually they would give constructive criticisms until the person got it right. And then eventually the student or the apprentice would become just as skilled as his or her teacher. Now we are called as Christians to be apprentices of Christ. We're called to be, as they say in Latin, alter Christus, other Christs. As apprentices of Christ, we join with other apprentices and learn from the master. So we're called to do this in community, not just on our own, but as a church. And this is a lifelong process. Nobody has it all right the first time. Everybody has to learn and it's step by step and we learn from one another. Now let's look at faith. So faith in general, this is a vocab word. Faith is a grace that enables an ascent of mind, heart, and will. Faith is a grace that enables an ascent of mind, heart, and will. You may say, what does ascent mean? I'll give you an example. In England, there is the parliament. They vote on laws. In order for that law, or in order for that act to become a law, they have to go to the queen, the monarch of England. And what they do is, they give it to her, and she gives her assent, which means she says, yes, let that be a law and then it becomes a law. So for us, we have, we have the door. God knocks, but we have to open it up and to allow God inside. So we have to give an assent of our mind, heart, and will to Jesus. And we have the choice. He's not gonna force his way in. And it speaks to a relationship with God, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God, as we know as the Trinity. A bit more on faith. Faith also has to do, as a word, with trust and belief. So for example, I know that I have faith in my mom when she tells me I'm going to pick you up after school at 4 o'clock, what am I going to do? I'm going to be outside waiting at around 4 o'clock for my mom because I believe she's going to be there. Or for example, you believe that somebody's telling you the truth as a friend or turning on a computer. Sometimes we have blind faith. I know that this has happened in the past. I know that this is happening in the future. I should expect the same exact thing to happen now. 
So when I charge my computer, I unplug it, and then what happens? I'm able to use it, or I can do the same with my phone. If I unplugged my phone from the charger and all of a sudden it went dead right away, or the computer, the same thing happened, we'd say, hey, what's going on with that? And we would lose our faith in that element. But we're called to have that trust and belief with God. So let's look at the theological definition of faith. Faith is our positive response or assent to God's revelation. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, By faith, man completely submits his intellect and his will to God. Man gives his assent to God the Revealer. Faith is both a gift and a virtue. It is something that is freely given and it's a virtue. But what's virtue? Let's take a look at that. So virtue. Virtue is the habitual or a habit and firm disposition to do the good. So it happens over and over and over again. For example, I get up in the morning and I brush my teeth. That is a good habit. What about for virtue? I can make sure that when I see my mom and she needs help, I'm just gonna go and help her with the groceries and then I'm going to just do it. And it happens over and over and over again. That's virtue. Virtue gets its name from cardo, meaning hinge. And many other virtues derive from these. So these things lead to something deeper, something more, and it helps us to be overall better people. Two categories of virtue are cardinal virtues and theological virtues. So cardinal virtues, they include things like prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. And the theological virtues are faith, hope, and charity, or love. Now, the theological virtues are infused into our souls, whereas the cardinal virtues, we have to work at those, and we have to try to imitate those, and really, frankly, by being Christians, that's what, who we're called to be. So we're called to be just. We're called to do the right thing for other people. And when we see injustice, we're called to speak out for justice. Faith. Faith is conferred in our baptism. It enables us to believe in God and all that God has revealed to us. It also helps us to accept what the church proposes. So for example, I believe that the church, when the church tells me that something called transubstantiation happens where the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, even though I don't see it, even though I can't taste it, even though I don't see a physical change, in faith I believe that there is a change, that what was bread and what was wine is now the body and blood of Jesus our Lord. That's faith. Sometimes things happen in the past that can hurt us, but naturally we are called to be people of faith. It also helps us to accept what the church proposes, and Christians must cultivate their faith. It doesn't happen all at once. It takes time. It's like watching a plant grow. You have to water it, you have to care for it, you have to do it over and over and over again, but eventually you start to get it. And we're called to proclaim as our belief in Christ, to bear witness to it and to spread it to others. As Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 18 in the Great Commissioning, go forth and spread the good news, proclaiming, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And it's personal. Faith is personal and communal. It happens for us. It happens in the context of the community. Hope. It enables us to desire heaven eternal life. It helps us to trust Christ's promises. Hope keeps us from getting discouraged as we live in the Christian life. I can hope for a better tomorrow. I can hope that when my grandfather or grandmother dies that they are with God. I can hope that one day where they are I also shall be because Jesus Christ told us I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Charity. Charity empowers us to love God above all things for his own sake and our neighbor. There's a difference that we have beside something called a need 
and a want. I can need food, water, shelter, and I can want things like the best new app for my iPhone. But at the same time, I'm called to love my neighbor. Jesus tells us this, there is no greater love than to love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. The domestic church. So faith, as first shared within our home, we have to trust one another in our home. People are human. We make mistakes, but we're called to trust. Parents and children worship God, receive the sacraments, and witness to Christ and the church. We see a family as a smaller church. Each person has their role. No one can replace mom, no one can replace dad, but at the same time, we can see how it all complements one another, the relationships, and nobody can replace you. Religion flows from our Christian faith. Faith and discipleship. Receiving the sacraments, especially Eucharist and penance regularly, and active participation in the life of the church is essential to living as a disciple of Jesus. What do you find to be the most difficult challenge or challenges to living your life as a disciple of Jesus? When we come back to class, I'd ask that you be prepared to talk about this. Living our faith in Christ. The gift of faith invites a disciple of Christ to engage one's whole person, our head, heart, and hands. So head, that revolves around our thinking, deciding, judging, our heart, feelings and desires, being able to choose for the greater good, hands, deeds, words, and making sure that we are the hands of Christ. Head, involve using the gift of our intellect to explore the mystery of God, oneself, and of all creation. Heart means using our God-given gift of free will. We have a choice to choose to live out our faith in Christ or to choose not to live our faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit gives us the grace to respond with our heart and use our anger, compassion, and other passions as Jesus did. Yeah, Jesus did get angry at times. At the same time, he remembered that we are children and we need to be held to task. Hands involves walking by faith. Have you ever heard of that? Or living out the new commandment that Jesus taught us to live. The works of mercy, as enumerated or told in the Beatitudes, are the work of our hands. And then lastly, faith, prayer, and worship. Through our prayer and worship, we communicate with God. Through this communication, we grow in faith, hope, and love. When do you pray? What helps you to pray? I would ask you to be ready to speak about that in class also. The Eucharist is the summit of the church's liturgy and life of prayer. All worship and prayer flows from the Eucharist. The church also prays something called the Liturgy of the Hours every day throughout the world. Please make sure at the end of this recording that you write down any words or phrases that you don't understand so that when we come back to class you might be able to speak about it and we can talk about it some more. Also please make sure that you take down notes in regards to the slides and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much for being with us today at Priest Verified, and if you have any questions, make sure you verify. God bless.